Hi there, I'm Jay Cosgathorpe and welcome to the fourth episode of InfoGoal's Football Betting Podcast. I'm joined by Liam Kelly again this week. Liam, we had plenty of goals in the Premier League, a couple of really big upsets as well. Obviously, Leicester going to Manchester City and, and really making a marker almost in, in, in what they could expect to achieve this season. And West Brom getting a surprise point against Chelsea. Did anything in particular catch your eye? Uh, I think everyone's going to say the same thing, but penalties getting a bit out of hand, so to speak, but... <laughs> I like the pun there, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be too... like uh, Personally, I'm not too worried about Man City as much as people are after that result. I mean, they're missing a lot of players and I know they'll improve with the San and Ruben Diaz as well, so... Well, I think uh, it's just goals, goals, goals again, and it? it's a bit less, a bit more underwhelming this week because of the penalties, but another exciting weekend. Yeah, I saw that in your Premier League review article, you were pulled up some really interesting numbers about the number of penalties that have already been given this season. I think it's 20 in 28 games, which is a, a staggering number. Um, Stephen, you also join us once again, unfortunately for, for your Newcastle boys. Got battered, but somehow managed to get a point at Tottenham. It's quite unbelievable, wasn't it? I think everyone, every Newcastle fan was just in disbelief towards the end. It was comical. That was just another crazy decision, wasn't it, from another crazy weekend in the Premier League? Yeah, obviously we had the, the Eric Dyer one in that game, the Neil Morpai one in the Brighton game as well that unfortunately cost Brighton a, a point against Manchester United, even though the full-time whistle had already gone in that game. Um, but yeah, hopefully there's going to be more drama this, this weekend and, and hopefully more goals. But we'll crack on anyway with, with our best bets. Um, Liam, I'll come to you first. So we're going to start with our back bets or, or our, our naps of, of the week in, in England. Where are you going, Liam? What's tickled your fancy? I'm going to stick with the goals theme. I'm going to go to Ewood Park for the Blackburn Cardiff game. I'm back in both teams to score. Uh, I think I think it's been obvious the last couple of weeks how how important Blackburn look in attack. I mean, Adam Armstrong's on fire, but the young lad, Tyrese Dolan, have they've generated. 2.41 and 3.47 in the last two weeks uh, XG. I know that it was a bit lower against uh, against Bournemouth the first weekend of the season, which is kind of understandable, but still the squad scored two goals in that game. Uh, I just think they're, they're bound to get a goal at home, I think. And uh, Cardiff, they've just got they've got quality through the team. Kiefer Moore started off really well, I think. And Although their their XG totals have been a bit lower in the first couple of weeks, but but I fancy that will come on a bit. And away at Blackburn, they've got Blackburn have got some young young defenders there. They've done well so far, but uh, it's getting a bit of a tough match up this week. Especially like I say, we're keeping moving in form. I think it's going to be both teams to score in that. And uh, just under evens, I mean, I think I think it's a good bet. Good bet. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I mean, Blackburn in particular have been red hot, as you said, went to Derby and absolutely destroyed them in, in pretty much the first half. So, wouldn't be at all surprised to see a high scoring game there. Stephen, what's, where, where are you going? What's, uh, what's your nap of the week? Yeah, I'm going to go against the goals for you and I'm going to go to the Premier League on Sunday. And I'm back in Wolves Winter Nil, 2.20. Uh, uh, they're hosting Fulham on Sunday and we all know how bad Fulham have been. They're just absolutely desperate at the back and they've shipped lots of goals. Now, I know if, uh, Wolves were the second best defensive team in the Premier League last season, even better than Liverpool, according to expected goals. And while they did get a good result against Sheffield, they scored two early goals and looked OK against City in the second half, they had the heaviest defeat under Nuno against West Ham. And I know they didn't look themselves that game. I just think this is the perfect opportunity to bounce back. And with that strong defensive record from last season, I think with Fulham's wars considered as well, I think they'll be able to keep a clean sheet and I think they're nailed on for the win this weekend. Yeah, that does look um, a, a decent bet there. I think Wolves in particular will, were, was a massive surprise to see them get beat so comfortably at West Ham. Um, very unlike them. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that Nuno will want to, to tighten things up ahead of this game, especially given the fact they've conceded seven in the last two. Um, I'm going with the goals team. I, I think I'm, I'm heading to Leicester versus West Ham. Obviously, Leicester picked up that incredible win at Manchester City. Um, they've been free scoring this season so far. They've racked up five against City, four against Burnley, three against West Brom. 
Um, five of those goals have actually been penalties, but none of them have been given for, for handball, um, which is quite interesting. It suggests that, well, we what we already know about Leicester, the fact that they've got really nippy forward players that, that can get their body in front of defenders and, and commit uh, get them to commit fouls. So um, they're a potent attacking team. They've averaged 2.4 expected goals for per game so far this season, but they have conceded twice in the last two matches, which is a little bit of a concern and something that West Ham will be looking to exploit. The Hammers themselves have, have really impressed me in the last two matches. They went to the Emirates and were unfortunate to lose. Racked up over two expected goals there. And then obviously hammered Wolves, uh, racking up 2.7 expected goals um, at the London Stadium. So they're a, they're a hot team in terms of uh, attacking uh, creativity. Uh, and I think that, that we could be in for quite a high scoring match. So both teams to score and over 2.5 combined um, is around even money. And that really does look uh, like a, a sensible bet for me. A reminder that everything that we talk about on here, you can view via downloading the free InfoGoal app. You get analyst verdicts, you get pre-match probabilities, and you get XG league tables all at the touch of a button. In section two, we like to take a little trip around Europe. I'm setting down in Italy this week and, and probably the game of the weekend, uh, Juventus versus Napoli. I think Juventus were really fortunate to come away with a, a point at Roma last weekend. Roma created 2.7 expected goals to Juventus' 1.9, um, showing vulnerabilities def defensively with Juventus, which is something we didn't see the game prior uh, against Sampdoria. Maybe something to do with Andrea Pirlo tinkering with the formation and, and the starting lineup. But Napoli are, are a team that are in banging form. They've won both of their opening matches, scored. Eight times conceded none to beat Genoa 6-0 uh, last time out, albeit an undermanned Genoa due to the fact that some of their players had contracted the coronavirus. Two really strong attacking units are meeting at, at the Allianz and, and I do feel like both teams are scoring over 2.5 goals is, is should be a lot shorter than the 13-10 to 10 that, um, that is priced up. Stephen, I know that you're going in the same game. What's your fancy uh, in this cracker? Yeah, I'm packing my bags and getting on my uh, flight to Italy too with you, Jake. I'm going to Turin. But I'm backing Juventus to win at 2.04 against Napoli, obviously. Um, I'll echo the points that you said, and I do approach this game with caution. Juventus win the best last season, obviously, with the four first defence, according to XG in Serie A. But I thought the performance against Roma actually laid Roma, sorry, laid Juventus last week. And I thought it was respectable, um, playing with 10 men for half an hour. And they finished 21 points ahead of Napoli last season with better underlying numbers. And I just think that differential, considering you're getting 2.04, but Juventus for a win, I think that's a good price for the champions. And I always fancy Juve in these big games. And Ronaldo scored twice last week. So yeah, I'm going to back Juventus to win. Sorry, Jake, go against your, your bet there. That's all right. As long as Juve win 2-1, we can both win. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that that's a fair point that you make in terms of Juve's record in these, in these big games. However they manage to do it, they do t tend to, um, to get the better of their rivals. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get a, a home win, but a high scoring one. Liam, good. where are you going? I think you're, you're off to Germany, aren't you? You've got your bag packed and uh, <laughs> your German beer in your bag. Yeah, going to Stuttgart. I don't quite know what it is, so I might get lost, but <laughs> I'll go there. Uh, I'm going to lay by Leverkusen at 1.93 on the Betfair Exchange. Uh, they seem to be lost without Kai Havertz and uh, Kevin Volland at the minute. Uh, created just 0 0.46 and 0 0.91 in the first two games. Uh, expected goals, again, albeit against Wolfsburg and RB Leipzig, but still you would expect a little bit, a little bit more out of their attack. Uh, like I say, they're travelling to Stuttgart. Stuttgart have started on, on fire, two wins. I will caveat, by, uh, caveat that by saying it is against Freiburg and Mainz, but at the same time, they created 2.68 and 2.40 XG in their, in their games. Just look a real threat going forwards and get anywhere near that, really. And, and like I say, Leverkusen are struggling. It's always, always a hard place to travel. I know Stuttgart have struggled over the last few years, but it's always a hard place to go. And at 1.93, it's just too much. The way teams are, are progressing over the start of this season, I, I just think it's a really short price, so I'll be laying that. Yeah, can't really argue. Leverkusen have looked um, a shade of the former selves, given the fact that they've lost 
two key players, two key attacking players. And yeah, Stuttgart have won quite handily their opening two matches. So yeah, I think that you're, you're bang on there in, in, in opposing Leverkusen. So that rounds off our European naps. And a reminder that if you go to the infogold.net website, you can actually see a full list of, of betting sign-up offers that, that are available. I think at the moment, the top one is with the bet for exchange, where if you bet £20, you get a free £20 to, to play with on the exchange. So check out infogold.net for um, all of the offers that we have available. So the third section of the Infogold betting podcast is looking at a, a team that we're to lay of, of the upcoming week. And it's very rare that this has probably happened over, over the course of the season, but all three of us are, have picked out the same team that we want to oppose this weekend, and that is Arsenal. They play Sheffield United um, on Sunday. Obviously got well beaten by Liverpool on Monday night. Sheffield United coming into the game on the back of three straight defeats. So, you know, we're just going to discuss between us why we, we think that Arsenal are a little bit too short and why we're happy to oppose them. So I know, Liam, you want to talk a little bit about Sheffield United's numbers in particular and, and how they might be a little bit misleading. Yeah, uh, I've... I'm quite high on Arsenal, not, not obviously not for the day, but in general, I, I do see a lot of improvement in them. Uh, but like I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the case for Sheffield United. I mean, in, in the first game, conceded, I, I mean, I get that, they conceded too early and the game's, game's gone at that point. They did rebound pretty well, uh, but it's, I know Wolves didn't show it at the weekend, but they're a really, really tough side to play against and... And the second game, uh, up against up against Villa, like twelfth minute, John Egan gets sent off. It's hard to come back from that. I mean, the, apart from that, the limited limited Aston Villa one point zero four xg, uh, highest percentage chance was sixteen percent. Missed a penalty in that game as well. Uh, it's it's just a rough. A rough time when you go down to ten men so soon. Um, there's no. I thought they did pretty well out of that. And then even against Leeds last weekend, to another one nil loss, he actually created quite a few chances in that game. Uh, one point seven one that they recorded against Leeds is one point three two. I was slightly worried that the they did tire pretty badly in the last 15 minutes, but I think that's just a, going to be what every team's going to be like against Leeds. It's relentless uh, intensity, really. So um, it's more of a, a play on, like, just just Sheffield United not to worry, really. I, I, they were the 10th best team, according to Winfrey last year. Um, uh, finished ninth. It's, they had a really good season. I don't think it's a second season syndrome. I just, I just think it's at 1.63, Arsenal are, are way too short. Uh, last year, Sheffield United were much better than them at the Emirates. Uh, drew 1-1. They beat them at Bramall Lane. I, I just think it's going to be a tough matchup for them. Yeah, Stephen, anything that you want to add? Yeah, I feel like Liam's stormy thunder there, but uh, it probably adds to the, the depth of this bet. I think it's a good, good bet for this weekend. I just echo them points, really. I, I think it is really hard to judge where Sheffield United are at the moment. Obviously, they've uh, had three losses, but the style of them and defeats, you, you can't make any assumptions. You can't make any conclusions, really. Um, the one thing I would say, though, I am quite concerned about where the goals are going to come from this season for Sheffield United. Um, Musset and McBurney both scored six last season. And, you know, Musset's still out and some issues with him. But I do think they'll just set up to be difficult to, uh, to score against this weekend. And Like I say, they're, they're winless in three, and I just don't think they're going to be allow themselves to concede, I think. I'm going to sit back, play it deep and be hard to break down. So, yeah, I'm going to agree with Liam and I think 1.63 is a good price to lay off. Yeah, so you two have teed off on, on why Sheffield United could be un underestimated. I'm just going to talk a little bit about Arsenal. Be Obviously, you started the season with a, a really impressive win at Fulham. Um, but the more that we see of Fulham, the less impressive that win looks. Um, Fulham really are tragic. They look really poor defensively and they are getting comfortably beaten week in, week out. Arsenal then played West Ham, in which they were thoroughly outplayed, in my opinion. They lost the XG battle quite considerably, and, and I think they only mustered six shots in that game at home, uh, which is you know, pretty poor for a team that are, are, are 
you know, been touted by many to, to creep into the top four. Follow that up at Liverpool and obviously, you know, losing at Liverpool at Anfield in particular is is pretty much expected for every team. Um, but it was the manner of the defeat that, that worried me again. They only managed just the three shots. Four shots if you include the, the Lacazette one that would have perhaps been ruled offside. But unfortunately, Opta is still counting that one in, in their um, model. So all in all, I'm just a little bit worried about them, um, most, mainly in attack. Um, I think defensively, like Liam says, I've seen a slow improvement in Arsenal, um, but it is slow. And I don't think they're progressing at a rate that many people are in, in the media and pundits are perhaps leading you to believe. So, um, yeah, I've taken a little deeper dive into their attacking numbers. Only West Brom this season have created fewer chances per game than Arsenal. Arsenal have created eight, an average of eight chances per game this season. Uh, and if you go back to when Arteta was appointed, which was, I think, around Boxing Day's first game, no Premier League team has created fewer Premier League, uh, fewer chances the, than uh, than Arsenal. They've created 217 in that time, which is around 9.4 per game. So they really, they don't create that many opportunities. And I think the one thing that's sort of lifted them to a level that has them in the conversation for a top four, top six spot is the clinical finishing of the likes of Aubameyang and uh, I was going to say Lacazette, but he missed a couple of big ones at on Monday night. Um, but as a team, they have been pretty clinical and I don't think that's sustainable over a long period of time. I would like to see them bring in an attacking midfield player um, to play alongside a Xhaka or an El Nene. I don't think them two can play together. Um, so, there, you know, there's, there's things that we like about Arsenal, absolutely. But given what we've seen from them under Arteta, I do think that this price is just too short to get on board with. Um, 1.63 to lay them, in my opinion, is... You know, I think that's a really sensible bet. If it if Arsenal turn up and win three or four nil convincingly, then you know, you're only losing 0.63 of your stake. Um, and you know, if they do do that, then obviously we will have to reevaluate and um, depend on on what happens. But I'm in agreement with everything that you guys have said in terms of Sheffield United being underestimated and and perhaps unfairly written off after um, you know three games. It, it's surprising, isn't it, Liam, that Sheffield United are now third favourites for relegation. Yeah, I didn't even realise that. To be honest, I'm pretty surprised. I, I don't, I don't get why they would be. To be honest, uh, I don't see them. There's not too much to change. The change from last season that there is room for improvement. I know the the one Ryan Brewster pretty bad. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But I don't see why they should be third, third favourites for the drop. You know, if people do tend to overreact this early in the season and. That seems like the biggest overreaction to me. Absolutely. I just yeah. add, if, sorry, Jake. I just add, if they can get Brewster, I think that would be a fantastic signing because they are crying out for goals and they are playing some good stuff, as we've touched on. They, are, they really are if you do watch them play. So, yeah, I think that's a bit of an overreaction in the market. Yeah, so all three of us in agreement that, that Arsenal are too short here and, and Sheffield United have been underestimated. Like Liam said, I think the fact that Sheffield United actually went to the Emirates um, it was maybe January of this year and got a 1-1 draw while Mikel Arteta was in charge. Winning the XG battle in that game actually does bode well for them and it will be tough to beat, as Stephen said, stuff tough to break down. Conceded 39 in 38 Premier League games last season. So, um, yeah, really impressive uh, stuff from them last season and I think it's just a matter of time. I think we're all in agreement that it's a matter of time before Sheffield United do start picking up results, which pains me to say as a Sheffield Wednesday fan, but um, I think it's more likely that they will do uh, do that than keep losing games. So we're laying Arsenal at 1.63 um, and that rounds off this, this week's InfoGold betting podcast. A reminder that everything that we spoke about is available uh, on the free downloadable uh, InfoGold app and also on InfoGold.net where you can find all sorts of previews for the upcoming game week from Europe to the Premier League to the Championship. Um, and keep keep your eye on InfoGold's social media channels as well, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, especially as the Champions League draw will be taking place um, on Thursday and you'll be able to see updated probabilities um, for the group stage and for the outright winner of the competition, which will no doubt be a, a huge talking point over the next week. So um, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>